Hello and thank you very much for joining me on this video and on today's project I'm going to be restoring, well I say restoring, or building up from old parts a retro PC. Um, I've currently got an old machine but it's really only good for late 90s games as it's got a 1GHz processor, 512 meg of RAM and a uh, NVIDIA 5200 card uh, running Windows 98 SE which is great for games from sort of 98 to 2001, that sort of period. Um, but older games run too fast or, or don't work very well at all. So I wanted to get a bit of an older machine to run games from sort of 91, 92, all up until around 96, 97, um, around that sort of period. Um, so I went on eBay and I brought this machine, which you see here, which is absolutely but ugly, as you can see. Um, but I got it because it was cheap. Uh, so this only cost me 35 pounds. Um, and it's actually not a bad spec in terms of what I'm looking for. So this has got a Pentium 2 266 megahertz processor, um, I believe it's 64 meg of RAM, and a uh, crummy NVIDIA graphics card from the uh, from the day as well. I think it's a, a Vanta card which will come straight out, um, and I might put something else in there. I mean, they were on the Vanta card, it's not bad, but it's not really period um, accurate for what I'm after. Um, but I might see what works and what doesn't. Um, one of the things I do like about this machine, and one of the reasons I chose it, is the motherboard um, has AGP, PCI, and ISA slots. So I've got a lot of choices in putting an AGP graphics card, but I've also got ISA slots for Sound Blaster sound cards, which would be ideal for, for DOS games, which are a little bit fussy when it comes to sound. Um, but I'm not going to leave it in this case. Uh, for a start, it's ugly. Secondly, it's really scuffed up. Um, I've switched the machine on already just to see if it boots. It does, but the CD-ROM drive doesn't work, so that's going to be removed. Um, and the power supply it sounds like it's probably on its last leg, so that will need to be changed. So I'm going to put it into a new case. I'm going to put in a few other new parts, new power supply, new uh, disc tray, and um, I think the CMOS battery needs changing as well. Um, and then see what it can run, see how good it is. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I've got a few parts out now. Um, the inside of the machine is absolutely filthy. I don't know how clearly you'll see on the camera. Um, if I let me show you the front of the floppy drive there. It's pretty filthy, to say the least. I imagine that this could be the first time this machine's been opened. Um, yeah, it needs a good clean. Well, I mean, there's no point cleaning the case because it's going to be changed with a new one anyway. Um, but I will at some point clean up the components. Um, there's just grime everywhere, there's dust all in the power supply, which is probably why it's really noisy. It's probably not because it's going to fail at any moment, well it may do because it is quite old, but also the fan's probably struggling. Um, um, I, or I did actually uh, mention in the intro that it's a 266MHz Pentium 2, it's actually a 266MHz 266MHz Celeron but I'm going to put in a Pentium 2 as well. Um, well, not as well, instead of. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to downclock it. So I'm going to downclock the Pentium 2 down to 133 megahertz. The reason being is that over 133 and 233 megahertz around that sort of area, you run into a lot of speed issues with older games, um, whereas 133 megahertz would be perfect. Any games that need more than that will probably run well on my other retro machine anyway. So that is all absolutely fine. Um, so it's just time to get some more components out. Right, so the um, sound card 
is uh, let's have a look. Seems a lot of markings on there. Oh, it's an advanced logic um, card. Now I didn't know um, with this card here because they'd researched the card before I got the machine. It is Sound Blaster compatible. It's not the best clone ever. Um, to be honest, it's a pretty bog standard um, Sound Blaster clone. However, it has got one of the best in terms of compatibility with Sound Blaster, and it's one of the few cards that can do stereo Sound Blaster 16 audio, um, which is pretty decent. But the quality of the sound, yeah, it's, it's not terrible, but at the same time, it's not, not the best. Um, certainly not up there with a proper Sound Blaster card, but I'm not gonna spend 50 to 100 pounds an actual sound blaster, um, at least not for the time being. So that's gone, that's out of the way. So this is a Realtek land card. It actually looks pretty, well I was going to say it looks pretty modern, but has got a BNC connector there for a Finnet a 10 base. I think it is. I can't remember if it's on my head. I'm sure people in comments will tell me. Um, yeah, the old IPX standard. But it's also got RJ45 as well. So I'll keep this in the machine in case I ever want to take it online. And it's actually in pretty good condition. Like there's not a great deal of dust on there. I don't know if it's just where it's been sheltered by the graphics card or whether this was added a lot more recently. I mean, it's certainly not a particularly new card. Now apologies for the audio performance as well, the microphone I'm using is not ideal. But it's um, a lapel microphone so I can talk and work at the same time which is handy for jobs like this. So yeah this power supply, I don't know how clear it's going to come up on the camera but it's really, really grimy. It just feels horrible in the hand. and. Let's get this hard drive out. Now this hard drive that's in there um, is a 500 meg hard drive, but when I booted the machine up to test it, um, it didn't recognize it at all. And no matter what I did, it just refused to recognize the drive. So I think that is dead. Um, I'm decided I'm gonna use a, I've got a laptop hard drive, uh, which I will use via an adapter, just for the time being. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 500 megabytes, which would have been ideal if the drive worked, but it doesn't, so never mind. Motherboard is out. I've put on there the Pentium 2 processor as well. I did that at the same time. Um, the Pentium 2 slot one processor and uh, also, I've changed the pins uh, to lower the speed. I'll rest this on the wood. So it's 64 meg of RAM, AGP, PCI and ISO slots um, on there as well. We've got an onboard ID controller. Um, it's also got two USB slots, um, which is pretty handy. Um, do you think we need the CMOS battery I'll change as well once it's in the case. Now I've got a new case here, but it, you'll see in a second how it is very fitting. Oh, there we go. So uh, this is brand new, out of box, but it has the aesthetics of an older machine, which is perfect. I want one that looks the part, but and then want a horrible old grotty case, um, neither at the same time. So this is perfect. Stop for a floppy, stop for a CD-ROM drive. Front audio and USB behind the panel here, all I'm led to believe, which is great. Um, can even put my own logo here, which is awesome. 
and then maybe I'll get some Pentium 2 and Windows 98 stickers to go here just because I'm that kind of guy. Right, now I'm going to open this up um, and have a look. Now you're probably wondering why I've gone for a desktop style case and not a tower. Simple reason um, is my first computer, which is an Apricot MS540, came as a desktop style machine and I just, I love that machine and I want to try and recreate that. open her up and as you can see it's nicely centered on camera because it's just how I do things I assume it just slides back yeah there we go well that's quite a heavy case which is actually really good believe it or not that's what I like good quality metal and it is actually really Good quality case so far it seems anyway. Loads of screws. Yeah, I'm so impressed. I'm gonna now um through the power of editing move the camera magically above it. Right, and there we go. So one case which does it have a speaker? Doesn't look like it. I was hoping maybe it would have a speaker in well, actually. That's the power cable. Does it have a speaker? Oh my god, it does have a speaker. Good, happy days. That saves me a job. Now is a good time actually to check capacitors. Any have blown. Well, probably quite obvious if they only had because it wouldn't have started up, but more a question of if any look like they may do. And they look decent condition to be honest so far. Um, there's a few bent pins, mind you, which I use a screwdriver to bend back in place because these ones are touching each other. There we go. Yeah, it's bent nice and straight. Um, so I think it's just a case of putting it in now, um, to be honest. I think that'll be the next step. Right, so I've got the mobile board in. Um, not screwed in now, that's what I'm going to do next. So I was a bit confused because the case, the standoffs are welded in. Uh, they're not removable and there's uh, two which don't protrude through the board even though they say ATX. But where they touch the back of the board there's no tracers, there's actually a blank part of the board. Uh, so I think that the board's blank there for a reason. Um, so it doesn't touch any screws that would be there. So I think it is fine.
Okay, so that's the moral board in. Um, you can see why I was confused with the standoffs. Um, don't all fit in, but there's none which seem to be touching any of the traces. So fingers crossed, that should be all right. Um, the next thing to go in will be the power supply. Um, actually, nope, scratch that. I'm gonna do the front connectors next because they can be a pain. Right, I've got that done, so that's perfect. Um, now, there'll be the power supply. So we've got here a Cooler Master power supply. Not a modular one, but never mind. Now the um, aesthetics of this, I know it does not match the case or computer, um, but I'd rather have a new power supply that is fairly decent. One that's efficient, it's 400 watts, which is more than this computer needs. Obviously, it'll only draw as much as it needs. Cooler Master, you know, so they're a decent brand. Uh, and we can get this popped in. drives in um, as the next port of call. Right, let's get the front off. I'm really actually impressed with the build of this case. Really impressed. For a cheap case, it's well built, which is ideal. All right, now floppy drive, which is so filthy, I'm gonna have to clean it up. I don't know if I've got anything, if I have any wipes, I've got some tissue, yeah, I'll do for now. We'll use that for now. I'll go over the machine at some point and give it a proper clean. But at least we can get majority of the grime so it's probably isn't the most interesting video because it's mostly that's slightly better and you can you know, still use a proper clean at some point but I feel a lot happier with it going in the machine in its current state yeah, how does how does install Right, so we've got that in its caddy. I've only tightened it on one side though, um, just while I match it up with the front. I'm going to put the case on at least semi properly. Yeah, okay, that's. Um, that's about where it needs to be. Around about there. And there we go. One floppy drive. Which hopefully will slide into place. Hopefully. Maybe. There we go. 
Yeah, that actually really looks pretty decent. Now we just screw these back in. Excellent, right, floppy drive is in. Next step is disk drive. Now the one that was in the machine wasn't great, I'll be honest. So I've got this one here. Uh, this is a light on drive. Um, it's a little bit newer and faster than what I would like. It's 52 times. I think, is it rewritable? Yeah, it's rewritable as well. So yeah, it's not really ideal, but I'll live with it for now. It's just gonna be easier going in from the front. machine so that you can all see what I'm doing or at least figure out what I'm doing even if you haven't quite got the same angle we should have actually put this in before the floppy drive because I'm not going to screw it in on the other side uh, never mind I'll just take the floppy drive out in a second I also need to put the hard drive in as well although that won't need to be mounted for reasons which will become apparent soon. Right now, undo the floppy drive again. I tell you one thing, a project I wouldn't mind doing with this case is a sleeper machine. So this case, but with modern parts inside it, that'd be really cool. I'm not sure anyone else would agree with me, but I think mean, that'd be cool. Need to think of getting a fan for this machine. Uh, thinking about it, I don't, I'm not sure if I've got any spare case fans. I think I do somewhere. Well, I've got loads of spare fans, but all of them are 120 mil. Whereas this case looks like it needs 80 mil. Yeah, that's looking really nice on the front. Really nice indeed. I'm really happy with that um to be honest right next is the hard drive now what i decided to do because i didn't really feel any of my ide drives would be reliable what i've done is got a laptop drive which is sata and used an adapter on it it should do the job it again this is only going to be temporary just to get up and running and um, i will at some point do a proper job uh, of, of the um hard drive Ah, and that slots in perfectly behind the floppy drive, which I will turn the computer around, actually. I think you've had enough of seeing the front. Let's go around to the, well, let's just put it on its, let's put it to the side. There we go, excellent. So as you can see, that hard drive actually slots in perfectly there out on the back, which makes sense, because I think it's meant to be the size of a drive anyway. Um, so that's good. Right, let's now get the power sorted for these because then we can tap the power out of the way. Send me out the way. Next one is the ID2, which will be for the CD ROM drive. Try and tuck the cable out of the way as much as possible. Now that cable management's really 
super important on this a machine like this. I just think it's nice to you know to make the effort. Yeah, I think that's I think that's right. We'll find out when we power it on if the um Floppy light stays on permanently. I don't know what this code management. I think that's about as good as you're gonna get it, which is not not brilliant, but yeah, it'll do. Right now the fun stuff is putting in the expansion cards. So we'll move the top one for graphics card. out so we've got graphics card at the top uh, same card I'll put in at the very bottom and then the network adapter can go in the middle pick them up in the order that they're next to me so network card in you go Ish, anyway, here we go. That's it. See, what'll be annoying is if I switch it on, it just goes bang, or I switch it on, and just nothing works. I've only had that happen once, to be fair, many, many years ago. Might rather not happen again. Right, sound card. in all the connectors look to be in which is excellent right let's get you screwed in there we go one sound card is in right now for graphics card um i've actually gone for an ati um rage 128 pro it's a little bit newer than what the machine needs to be honest i have got a pci um rage uh, so not about Rage, although it's based on Rage, um, an all-in-one deck card which I was tempted to put in. Um, but I think this will be good. It's probably better to have a slightly newer graphics card anyway. Um, and this does have good DOS compatibility from what I've read online, which is super important. Right, perfect. Right, that's in nice and firm. And then just screw in the one next to it as well to help hold it in place. Excellent, so we've now got everything connected up. Um, drivers are all connected. Oh, I need to do audio cable next. Now I'm not gonna put a case fan in for the moment. I mean, to be honest, the power supply this fan will probably help because it's quite a large fan and it's pointing um, down towards power supply. So hopefully it will suck air through the back vent over the power, um, CPU through the power supply and back out again. Not ideal. Um, I will get a case fan um, at some point to go in. I have to say that is a pretty nice looking machine so far. I'm going to get the top, pop this on. Oh, it's been so many years since I've had a desktop machine like this. I'm so happy. It's not even finished yet. Okay, so this is the machine complete. I have to say I think it looks pretty nice actually. Um, I also bought this CRT monitor as well, which I got really cheap on eBay for £15, so that's pretty good as well. Um, needs a bit of a clean, but sounds good. That looks excellent. Let's go into the BIOS and see. Keyboard works. Um, it's not detected the hard drive for some reason. Yeah, now it has. There we go, that's what we want. Excellent, hard drive is found. Ah, oh, 
have to say this looks so good I actually love it unfortunately I don't have enough space to have it permanently set up like this with the monitor on top um, and it's going to have to go under the desk but it'd be nice to occasionally you know know that I can if I wanted to I can bring the machine out and put it on the table um, let's switch off everything that's not in use so parallel port is off serial port is off because then we can save our queues for the sound card everything looks perfect all looks fine right so I'm now going to go ahead and get um, get Windows installed um, and maybe try it and put a couple of games and stuff on there and obviously drivers so we'll be back in a second oh and actually talking of which the floppy drive the cable is the wrong way around so I will have to switch that around I'll do that next as well right so I've got the floppy drive cable swapped over so now let's switch it back on um, I also installed Windows as well a couple of games everything should work perfectly now with a bit of luck now I haven't got any speakers down here and I'm not going to move my speakers down from upstairs just for this so I've plugged in just this little anchor speaker thing for the moment there we go camera rearranged and uh, the flickering that you're seeing is um, not actually apparent on the CRT it's just because of the um, camera okay, so install software right so that's Windows installed um, I've put on a couple of games as well um, so I'm going to load some up and then uh, install some more as well. Let's see how it runs Quake 2. Uh, so I'm just going to go into um, multiplayer just more so we can have a look at the performance than anything else. It's probably a little bit too high. It's actually not terrible. I don't know. Actually, it probably is a little bit unplayable. Let's drop it down a bit. Good thing with CRTs is they are pretty happy with most resolutions, although, can I get this in full screen? Not available in this mode. Okay. There we go, oh yeah, that's a lot, a lot better. So I think because the um, this game needs, I believe, a 133 processor, it's probably just at the end, you know, the edge of what the computer can do. I could always up the um, processor back to its stock of 266, but to be honest, this is fine. This is very playable indeed. And it's worth remembering, of course, that this computer will be running old games. You know, we're, we're talking 91, 92 to around 95, 96. And my computer will do sort of 96, 97 to 2001. And then I've got an old IBM ThinkPad machine with XP, which will do games from August 01 when XP launched, you know, up to sort of 06, 07. Um, for any games then that didn't work on Vista and 7 but, but do on um, on Windows XP okay so here this is more of a type of game that I want this machine to to play now this game doesn't work properly on my other retro machine works fine here and Sandblast emulation is not bad it's not brilliant but it's not, I've heard worse. Okay, now how about a bit of Doom? Oh yeah, this is what it's about. This um, entire project is now worthwhile. 
Now this game doesn't work on my other machine. Um, well, it, it kind of does, but the audio is a little bit messed up. Even though it's actually that machine has a proper Sound Blaster card, it's a Sound Blaster Vibra um, PCI. But even though it sounds really quite nice, um, games are super fussy. I don't even know why I'm, why I'm not going to just in this level. Did we're talking and playing at the same time? But yeah, this is absolutely incredible. I'm playing a game on a CRT, which it could do with being cleaned, um, and a desktop machine underneath it. It's absolutely amazing. It sounds actually pretty decent, to be honest. Listen to that music. I don't know how clear it's going to be for you all to hear. I'll turn it up. It's not the best speaker, to be honest. Okay, another game. So now it's SimCity 2000. And this is the uh, floppy disk version, so there's no um, intro movie. runs absolutely fine. Mm. I could quite happily now just play some City 2000 for the rest of the day. Right, there's the tentacle. This game does not run at all on my other retro machine. So I'm gonna finish off this video with us watching the intro. Hopefully you get the audio, but if not, just enjoy the uh, amazing video. Mmm, I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great, smarter, more aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 